We are amidst an industrial revolution of terms. We are fabricating and mass producing messages, reinventing words. The production of connection for consumption, connection as commodity, is a change we cannot yet fully conceive. Texting, tweeting, and posting are devastatingly intimate, private, personal activities that can also be public and political. Sharing can be as punitive as it is positive. These porcelain text bubbles are slip-trailed and slip-cast, hanging by threads. I don't understand the electronic systems of connectivity, but I continue to use them. Information abundance is fascinating, overwhelming, chaotic, and intricate. Again, this piece reflects the rabbit hole of navigating through data, emails, ads, pop-ups, etc. on screen. It can be awkward, but discoveries occur along the way. I attempt to work in a similar fashion. As of December 2017, Facebook had over 25,000 employees, up from only 150 in 2006. In 2015, executive pay was over $64 million. If the internet is the Gutenberg printing press of our era, social networking and instant messaging are the products to sell. Companies capitalize on manipulating our most vulnerable human aspects. They cultivate anticipation, fear, and habitual checking by instant random reward. It's classic Pavlov. Because we so desperately want what we cannot touch, the virtual comforts and community forever evading us, just on the other side of the screen, we pay. The physical actions of reaching out and touching someone are getting smaller, but the devices more expensive. This flattening of communication, stripping it of the senses and the body, compels me to stick loyally to physical process. I use clay to transform the virtual into the visceral. It allows me to create lines that I can read between, symbols to play with, portals in which to grow things unspoken. I think about the preciousness, delicate tensions, and messy, confusing challenges of my exchanges and relationships, as well as the old telephone game in which what was originally said is never heard correctly in the end. Conversing is just, it's work. We are all very industrious at this very difficult task. But it's easy to be impatient. This piece is called, When Will I Get It? As hard as I work, maybe I'll never get it. Whatever that is, micro or macro, when will I get the notification? When will I get the item I ordered? When will I get the other person's behavior? When will I get the love I think I need? Embedding both desperate honesty and self-effacing or cynical humor is important to me uh, to do in many of these sculptures. I love the way Venn diagrams illustrate the complexity of overlap. 3D printing has been called the third or fourth industrial revolution, and though I construct my work by hand, once in a while I do incorporate 3D prints, as in Boolean on the top left. A dimensional Venn diagram, perhaps the piece on the right is called intersection. I view these forms as mini landscapes, evolving subtly through the drawing-like movements of my hand, shrinking, bending, and warping through fire. They are topographies documenting slow exploration and discipline. I build by laying liquid porcelain down, line by line, on plaster, accumulating plane and form. It is perhaps it is perhaps anti-industrial, not because I don't value the efficiency and potential of huge 3D printing factories like those on the left, but because in my fight against flatness, methodical contemplation seems the best approach. As a friend of mine called it, I am an analog 3D printer. Sometimes just embracing the tangled results of commodified visibility via social media platforms and access or plugging in allows you to enjoy the distractions, as dangerous and pre precarious as they may be. But there comes a point when none of this is enough. This piece, always only, has a poor, tortured, discarded text bubble hanging within its cage-like stand. And what do you do when the screen is blank or the sign is empty? Anxiety and isolation are common symptoms of our, quote, alone together tech culture coined by psychologist Sherry Turkle. Mobility of connection changes our notion of home, and it is easy to indulge in the headspace of lack. The text on Just Don't on the left is obscured by the form, and the compartment and dwelling on the right has no inhabitant. There's a real app 
that shows you how much your Instagram posts are worth to an advertiser. You should check it out. The Likers here was inspired by my initial distaste for the blatant popularity game of this platform, but I drank the Kool-Aid. You can find me there shamelessly wishing for likes, just like anyone else. And thanks for those. My newer work, Terms, has involved taking words out of the messages and making them objects. Terms of endearment, terms and conditions, terminology, termination, etc. Words like this are so foundational to our culture, but so slippery, evading singular definition. They are materially nothing, just ideas, but structure our very understanding of the world. I am fascinated by how fragmented and hybridized words are becoming. They carry us along, but can transform into binding identifiers if we let them. These morphed word studies from top left are what, right now, ouch, and delete. At first, my idea of truthology was a cynical response to fake news. Now, however, this word encapsulates my feeling that our culture is currently in an epistemological crisis. On the lighter side, these homonyms, just and fine, are so simple yet so complex. They are tiny poetic landscapes to which we bring ourselves every day. This and cup and ampersand sculpture are my, are my rather passive ways of promoting inclusivity over either or attitudes. Again, 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 records and accepts the powers and struggles of obsessive thought patterns and behaviors, as well as rhythmic yields of pra practiced labor. Sometimes the lines between function and dysfunction are more interesting to explore than to judge. Occasionally, we obsess about someone. This piece is called you, and the red word was at one point on the top. Who are the yous in your life? Take it too far, though, and individuals can become objectified on screen and consumed for pleasure. Screen meet here evokes the uncomfortable and sometimes gross economy of online life. We all just want to be right. This melting structure of that name in warning orange is barely holding this term up. This piece is called I Always Say Too Much. The mental mazes winding through text exchanges that I have sometimes can leave me feeling lost. So sometimes I shut up. This wall installation called Unsaid transforms a twisted and deformed angry phrase into something seemingly whimsical. Perhaps it is our secrets that truly define us. As a tribute to those secrets, to all left unposted, untweeted, and untexted, but yet absolutely real and powerful, I made this piece, Resolutions and Invisible Victories. I know you have them, and I wish to congratulate you. Thank you for watching.